Today I'm going to show you how you can easily make funnel cake at home and they are fried to golden brown perfection. I'm also going to be adding a glaze on top. This is going to be good. Okay, funnel cake at home. I'm starting off with two cups of all-purpose flour. I'm using this extra large measuring cup because it makes it a lot easier to pour into the container later. Here I'm going to add two tablespoons of sugar. I'm also going to add one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and one and a half teaspoons of salt. Now I'm just going to mix and combine well. By the way, you could also just use a bowl for all of this, but like I said, using a measuring cup makes it easier to pour into the squeeze bottle. Okay, so for the wet ingredients, I am working with one and a quarter cups. It's actually going to be one and a third cup in all, but I started with one and a quarter cups of whole milk and two large eggs. By the way, if you want this to be less spongy and extra crispy, Stick with one egg and extra liquid. Okay, I'm going in with two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I'll say that's optional. I like to add it. And now I'm just going to combine the wet ingredients. Now I'm just going to combine the wet with the dry. Okay, so this is the consistency I have. So I'm gonna add a little more milk because I want it a little runnier, not super watery, but a little thinner. So what I was talking about earlier is if you are into crunchy texture, adding the one egg and more milk to get the pancake batter consistency will yield a crunchier texture to the funnel cake. The egg is what actually makes it kind of spongy and soft. Okay, so this is the perfect consistency, and now I'm going to carefully pour it into a squeeze bottle. This is going to make your life easier when you are making your funnel cake. Okay, so I'm just gonna fill this up as much as I can. I might end up with leftover batter in the cup, which is fine. Now, if you have piping bags, that may work, but you see how runny it is? It might make a mess. Also, the squeeze bottle cap, I've cut down the little tip to the thicker part because you'll want it a little thicker to come out easier when you're squeezing it into the fry oil. So today we actually went to the Halloween store because we are dreaming of cooler weather. Maybe by the time I post this video, the weather will be cooler. But my youngest son does enjoy just walking through the store, looking at all the fun animatronics and decor. He enjoys this and it's kind of for free when you walk in the store if you don't buy anything. <laughs> But we did buy a couple of things for costumes. We have a Halloween party to go to in a week or so, so we want to prep for that. But check that out. That is really scary. But my son seems to enjoy it, so this is why we do this. I also was trying to get costume ideas, but then I went the easy route and decided to go with this meme because I had this color hoodie and sunglasses. So why not? Easy. I also took the kids to go get pumpkins. That's always fun for them. They like to draw on them or just have a pumpkin each. It's kind of festive for us. We kind of skipped the uh, pumpkin patch farm this year, which they were okay with that, but they did want to take home some pumpkins. So as we were doing these things, I kind of got into that fall festival mood. So this is why I went with funnel cakes today. So I preheated my cooking oil. And the key here, if you've ever made funnel cake, the batter will spread instead of staying in that swirl, you don't want to overheat the fry oil. Keep it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That is a good fry temp for this, uh, 345, 350, because if it gets any hotter, it will separate before it swirls. So here's my first attempt. I'm not a pro at this, but you just go into a swirl pattern. And after you make a lot of the swirls, then you go up and down in a line to sort of connect them. And that's it. And if you have the fry oil just right, you'll see how it stays together. 
So let's just say you are making your funnel cakes and it doesn't stay together in your little circle-y swirls. That just means you need to lower the cooking oil because if it does get overheated, like I said, it starts to separate once it hits the fry oil and it doesn't stay together. So I'm going to cook these until they are golden brown on each side. Okay, so this is done. I'm just going to let most of that fry oil drip back into my little pan pot here. And then I'm going to place it on a baking sheet with a wire rack and repeat the process with my funnel cake batter. So for the glaze, I'm working with one and a half cups of powdered sugar or confectioner sugar. I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of fine salt into the mix. And I'm also going to sprinkle in somewhere between a quarter teaspoon and a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Or you can just exclude it. You don't have to add cinnamon, but I love this in my glaze. I'm going to give that a mix first. And here, I was only going to add like one or two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I think I added like a tablespoon. But at this point, you should only add like a tablespoon of water, and I overdid that. <laughs> so I already can tell this is too much liquid for one and a half cups of powdered sugar. So what I'm going to do is add another half cup and essentially just kind of achieve that glaze consistency where it's thick. So I had to add another cup of powdered sugar. So I ended up using like two and a half cups of powdered sugar with the amount of liquid, but here we are, the glaze. Okay, so I'm going to try to make a smaller funnel cake. The other ones were kind of big, kind of what you get at the festivals or, you know, fairs that people go to this time of year, but I'm going to keep this right in the center and make it smaller. And you see how it separates that's because my cooking oil is really hot. It did stick together, but if it's super hot, all of it just goes everywhere and it doesn't stay in that little swirl. So that's why you have to be careful with your fry temperature. And if it does separate, you just lower the temp or take it off the heat for a little bit to drop the cooking oil temp. Okay, so this is going to fry until it's golden in color, just like this. And I'm gonna carefully flip this one. It's smaller. So yeah, there we go, whoops. And I already know that piece right there is mine. It's so crispy. I love it. So just let that continue cooking. And I want to show you, when you go to glaze it, it's kind of hard. I just wanted to give you an example. To flip this into the bowl with the glaze in it, you can do one side. But getting it out of the bowl and disturbing the actual funnel cake, it gets a little difficult here. But I still wanted to show you. You take it out with the tongs, you kind of let it drip, and then flip it over, and there, it's glazed. But using a measuring cup and drizzling it on top is a lot easier and less tedious or cumbersome to flip it out of the bowl. So this is what I opted to do. And like I said, as soon as you fry these up, put it on a large plate, sprinkle with powdered sugar and your favorite toppings, whether it's fresh fruit or whip or chocolate drizzle, and be creative, it's so good. I'm gonna let these set until the glaze kind of dries, just like this, and I'm gonna give you a close up. You can see, as I grab it, see how it kind of cracks? It gets kind of crackly, and it kind of has like that little glazed donut snap on the exterior. Yeah, this is a better one. And here I'm taking a bite so you can hear how crispy it is. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it, and thanks for watching.